Hey guys, welcome back to Builds by Maz. Today I'll be showing you how you can easily install a dimmable light switch. In this video I'll be using the Lutron Sonata. I like this switch because it's got a nice light bar on the side, which allows you to easily set your dimness level, and I think it looks really cool. But the basic process will be the same no matter what light switch you choose, and you'll be able to dim your lights like this in no time. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do before we begin is turn off the power to our light switch. This way we don't have any risk of electrocution. I'm replacing the light in my master bedroom, so I'll find the corresponding switch and flick it to the off position. It's always a good idea to double check that it's off just by flicking the switches on and off and making sure no lights come on. To get started, we'll first have to remove the faceplate that covers the switches, which is as easy as removing the screws. Go ahead and unbox your new switch and set it to the side. Mine came with some included screw caps, but if yours doesn't, you'll need to purchase some. Unscrew the old switch from the wall so that we can start to remove it. This is a basic single pole switch, which means that this is the only switch that controls these specific lights. This is a very common setup and you'll likely see two covered wires connected to brass screws like this, as well as an exposed copper wire which is the ground. First, we're going to remove that ground wire. If you don't see an exposed wire like this, it may be a green one. Anything that's green has to do with ground. For example, the ground wire from the new switch is also green, and we're gonna connect that to the ground wire coming from the wall. This is where you'll need those wire connectors. If you've never used these before, it's super easy. You just place the two wires together that you wanna connect and screw the top on. That's literally it. You can give them a little tug to make sure they've got a good connection, but that's all there is to it. Now we can move on to the other wires. You can unscrew them both from the old switch, and that should completely remove it from the wall. On the new switch, we're left with these black and red wires, as well as this extra blue wire, which I won't be using because this is a single pole switch. If you have this basic setup, you can just cap this blue wire. It's only needed when you have multiple switches controlling the same lights, and I can touch on that in a moment. We'll then connect one of the black wires from the wall to the black wire of the new switch and the other black wire from the wall to the red wire of the new switch. The great thing is it doesn't even matter which wires from the wall connect to the black or red wires from the switch because the current's going to flow through either way. Here's how everything should look once your wiring is complete. Got your red and black wires from the switch connected to the black wires from the wall then you have your green wire from the switch connected to the ground wire coming from the wall. And lastly, the blue wire is capped and not connected to anything. Now, if you have two or more switches that control the same lights, then what I just showed you won't work. I don't have any setups like this in my house, but I can walk you through some diagrams. This is likely what your switch will look like in the wall. It'll have two brass or similar screws and one third screw, which is a different color than the others. This is called your common wire, and you'll need to mark it with a piece of tape. This is the way your new connections will look. The black wire from the new switch will be connected to that common wire you just taped. Then the blue wire will be connected to any non-black wire coming from your wall. The red wire will go to the other black wire in the wall and the green will still be connected to the ground. Either way, we're ready to put our new switch back into the wall. You'll see that the up direction is actually labeled so you know which way to orient it. It's really just a matter of shoving all the wires back in there until it fits. Secure the switch to the wall with the screws we previously removed, and then add back the faceplate. Once you screw the faceplate back in and turn your power on, you're done! We can test out our new switch to make sure everything works. It's got your standard on and off, as well as a sliding touch bar that adjusts the dimness. I really like these switches, and I install them all throughout our home. They've got a modern look, and are especially helpful late at night or early in the morning when you don't want a bright light. If you decide to install your own dimmers, I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.